In today's episode, I'm going to be getting to grips with my rotary tool. So let's get started. Now, whenever I've referred to my rotary tool in the past, I've always referred to it as a Dremel, but it isn't actually a Dremel. It's a Clark's rotary tool. Now, I'm pretty sure I would have opted for this one because it was less expensive than the Dremel, but I think they're a pretty universal tool in that they all do much the same tasks and they all take the same accessories and bits. Now, I've had this probably for a good 10 years and I've only ever used it on a handful of occasions. You would have seen me use it in the Little Harbour Homewares shop episodes and I used it for routing out a channel for the lighting. I've also used it for sanding paint from stairs and I've also used it in the past for sanding cocktail sticks to make them really fine for making 1 12th scale pencils but I'm pretty certain it can do much more than that and I'd really like to have a go at using it for cutting wood shaping wood, carving, sanding, polishing and lots of other miniature jobs. So I'm really looking forward to having a go at all of those things but I'd like to start by giving you a close-up look at the rotary tool and showing you the accessories and bits that came with it. So the rotary tool comes in a lovely sturdy plastic carry case, got a little handle on there and it clips shut So here is the actual tool, nice compact size, fits nicely into your hand and it's not too heavy either. And then on here you've got your on and off switch and on the other side you've got your speed settings. So you've got six settings, one to five and then max. And then also on here you've got this little button at the front and that adjusts the opening there where you fit the attachments but we'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on when we actually come to fitting the pieces in there. And then also on here you've got this little hook and that then allows you to hook it onto an arm which you can attach to your desk so that you can fit an extension and use that rather than this tool when you're doing sort of miniature work. And I also used that when I made those grooves for the lighting in the shop. And it's just a lot easier to handle than this tool when you're sort of working on something small. So you've got this piece that fits to the desk, nice little rubber bit there. This is rather sort of like a vise. So you would attach it to the edge of your desk and then you fit this handle into it. And again, I'll, I'll set this all up later so you can see how that works and we'll use that as well. And that's where the Dremel then hangs over this hook at the end. And you would then fit this part out of there. To the Dremel. And then you can just use this smaller attachment, which is a lot easier to hold and to manoeuvre when you're working on smaller pieces. And I've still got a sanding disc attached to it there. So I'll put that back in there and then I'm just going to move the camera in and show you all of the smaller attachments that come with it as well. So this is the small selection of accessories that came with the tool. And you've got here some sanding bands. Now these are all actually quite a harsh grade um, sandpaper on there. And I did use one of these, if you remember, to sand the paint off the stairs for the Little Harbour Homewares shop, where a harsh grade sandpaper was really useful. But I think for sanding wood sort of prior to construction or even after construction, they would be a little bit too harsh. You've then got this polishing compound and this is actually a Dremel product and it did come with the tool which confirms what I was saying earlier that Dremel you know bits and accessories will probably fit all sorts of tools and this polishing compound is for metals and plastics for making them shine 
got a drill bit there, I think that's about a three millimeter, one eighth of an inch drill bit. We've then got some sanding discs in here. Now these do look to be um, different grades and got the little sort of chuck there, which you fit into the end of the rotary tool and then put the bits into and the little wrench, which you also use to attach the bits and the accessories or spanner as we call it here in the UK then got these bristle brushes and these are actually for metal work metal or stone and removing rust and you've got like a smaller brush there obviously for getting into smaller places and these always remind me of chimney sweep brushes <laughs> you've then got these two um, sort of attachments and this is what you would use to fit the discs and different um, tools onto these are grinding discs and again, they're for work on stone or ceramic or metal. So again, a little bit too harsh for woodworking. And then your little grinding stones there, all in different shapes and sizes, obviously for getting into different areas of pieces. And then this is actually called a dressing stone. And I'm not actually sure what that's for, whether that's for sharpening the tools or, or whatever, but I will find out what that's actually used for. So not a great selection of accessories with um, the actual tool and by that I mean not a large selection and mostly again for sort of metal work and things like that. So what I wanted to do was buy a kit that included more woodworking pieces. So let me show you that as well. So this is a 276 piece kit. Again comes in this lovely little plastic carry box and I got this from Amazon and I think it was about 19.99 and I think that's quite reasonable for the amount of bits that you actually get and there are quite a few pieces in here that I'll be able to use for woodwork so I think this was quite a good buy. So let's open it up and have a look what we've got in there. So as you can see, it's a really lovely range of bits and accessories. And the good thing about this is that it comes with this little leaflet. And inside here, you've got this diagram and each little section is numbered. And then you can come down here and find the number and it tells you what the bits are and what, and what they're actually used for. So if I start off in the lid up here, we've got some normal drill bits here which probably go from about one millimeter up to about four millimeters. And then these are the attachments to fit the discs to, like your sanding discs and things like that. And these are for your felt wheels. You've then got the wire brushes again, which are for sort of um, metal work and some harsh woodwork. A range of grinding stones made from different materials and they can be used for metal or wood. These sort of little rubber discs up here for attaching the little sanding belts and you've got a large range of those different sizes obviously to get in and out of different areas and also different grades as well although they don't say on them what grade they are it's just a matter of sort of feeling them and working out which one you're going to need for which particular job. This one here is for attaching the self-adhesive um, sanding discs to. So you've got some that you would just stick on there with a little adhesive pad and the pad actually comes on the disc. And that's um, those ones. And then this range of tools around here are diamond point drill bits and they can be used for marking and detailing, so etching, and I'm hoping for shaping wood as well, and embossing and things like that, so that, they'll be quite handy to try. And then moving down into this bottom section, we've got that cleaning compound again, sanding and cutting discs again in various grades. Here are the felt polishing discs. We've got a diamond wheel here, I'm not sure if that's for cutting, but we'll find out as we start trying all of these pieces. Some more grinding discs here, slightly softer ones as well. We've got all the little collets here for fitting bits actually into the tool. 
the little spanner or wrench again. These are emery cut-off wheels, so I think obviously they're for cutting and again they're all different um, sort of grades. These are called flap wheels and again these are the things like grinding on harder materials as stone, um, ceramics or steel and things like that so I'm not sure we'll be using those. Okay so what I want to show you now is how to set up the desk attachment so that we can use the smaller attachment for actually working with and I'll also show you how to fit the accessories into the tool. So I'm going to begin by attaching the desk clamp to the desk and this has got a jaw width of 70 millimeters or two and three quarter inches which is really useful for my desk because I've got the work top and then the actual desk top. So you just slide that over the edge like that and tighten it up. You've then got this sort of telescopic arm bit which screws into the top of there and this can be extended to whatever height you need it. It goes up quite high actually. <laughs> Probably don't need it up that high. And does that fix? Yes, I think you can lock that into place just by twisting it around like that. Right, you actually tighten that against the direction of the arrow so that's showing you how to loosen it. So that's now nice and firmly in place. And now let's fit the attachment to the actual rotary tool. So this is the attachment, that's obviously the end there that you work with. And then on this other end, that would normally be inside there, but you need to pull that inside bit out. That then fits into the chuck on the machine. So you push that in there like that. And then this little button here actually tightens the chuck. So if you're trying to tighten it up and that's not um, pressed down, then you'll just be twisting it round. So you need to push that down, which actually tightens that up. So tighten it as much as you can with your fingers and then you can bring in the little spanner or wrench. Fit that on and get it as tight as you can. And I've still got my thumb on that button. Pull the metal back down, right down to the little sort of screw part there, and then you've got this rubber bolt part <laughs> which you then tighten up over the top. Get that nice and tight. So that part is now fitted onto the tool and of course you can use the tool without this part but I just think for miniature work this part's so much easier to handle. So for all of the tests we'll be doing I'll be using this smaller piece. And then just to keep your wire out of the way you can hook that onto the holder on there. I'm not sure if that's the right way around but once I start using it I'll find out. Might need to push it around there like that. And then the heavy part of the tool is neatly out of the way and the wires are all out of your way and then you can just come over to your work surface and work on whatever you're working on. So let's have a look now at actually putting an attachment into this part. So I've got one of my old cutting mats here and I've got it turned upside down just to protect my work surface and my um, cutting mat that I use regularly. And I thought we'd start by having a go at polishing up some metal items. So I've got like a copper pot here. These are just sort of um, aluminium little boxes. And then I've got this lamp base, which is metal, but I've actually applied paint to that. So I'm not sure what will happen with that, but we'll have a look. So I've got here the little attachment which has got like a little pointed screw end and then I've got three polishing wheels here and I'm going to use the smallest of those but you've also got this little shaped one here for getting into all of the gaps. So you just need to screw your little polishing pad onto the top of that attachment like that and then with this to allow this to be tightened you need to pull this part down and you've got a little diagram on there as well showing you how to do that so pull that part down you can then slot your attachment in like that 
keep holding that part down so that you can then tighten that up. Actually, I could have used my fingers first. Get it as tight as you can first with your fingers and then you can use your little spanner. Get that nice and tight and then bring that piece back up and that's now in there nice and securely. So I've also got here the polishing compound. Now that's quite hard at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start up the tool and then just pick a little bit of that up on the end of the tool. Now because I think this is all going to be quite loud if it is I'll put some music um, over the top or I'll actually record over the top of the, the noise. So I'm going to switch the machine on to number one. So just click that on. Actually let me just see what it's actually set at because I only want it on the lowest setting. So that is actually on the lowest setting, number one. And we'll start off with that and see how we go. as though it's done a pretty good job on there. I don't think I had enough of the compound on and this is really hard so I think maybe it needs warming up before you then put that on and you could even maybe wipe that onto your kitchen towel and then wipe it onto the piece and then use the, the sponge. But I'm just going to wipe that off and give it a bit of a buff. And that was the other one. So I think that looks... I don't know if you can actually tell in this light, but that does actually look a lot um, smoother and a lot shinier than the original one there. And this would be really good to use on the metal miniatures because they are actually made so that you can polish them up to a really high shine. And they're made from white metal as well rather than this aluminium. So you would probably get a better result on something like that. So I'm now going to have a go on this little copper bucket. And I'm actually going to do what I suggested and actually try and put a little bit of the um, polishing compound straight onto it. And it is, it is just really hard, so I couldn't pick up enough. Let's just try a little bit on there. And I was just thinking if I rub that in first. Okay, so let's, let's have another go. seem to be doing too much so again I probably haven't got enough polish on but I am just going to go to a higher speed and see if that makes a difference. So I've just clicked on to number two there so let's try again. So that does look as though it's polishing that up and I'm just going to try and get a little bit more polish on there because I think that might be the key to getting a really high shine on there. Okay so I did manage to get a bit more um, polish there onto the head just by really sort of digging it in and, and having it spinning on the number two. So I think more polish is the key and that's sort of begun to shine up quite nicely. I've also put my gloves on which I should have done at the start. And these are just um, Nitrol gloves, but if you've got some heavier gloves, then I would recommend those. And you also need to put a little bit more pressure onto the piece that you're polishing. 
The other thing is that as you're polishing, this metal is going to get quite hot and not just in the place that you're polishing, it will get hot all the way around. So just really do be careful when you're polishing metal. And if you wanted to maybe attach that into some sort of desk vise, then that might be a good idea as well. Just for this demonstration, I'm only going to do a little bit on here for today, but if I was doing the whole thing, then I would try to secure this to my worktop. Okay, so let's have another go. So again, I'm still on the number two setting. Okay, so that has started to get quite hot now. So I'm just gonna buff that off with a bit of um, kitchen towel. Look at that. really has buffed that up. I'll try and get the light on it there. If we look around the other side and then go back to the bit that I've just done. I think that looks really nice but it did, like I say, start to get quite hot. But yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I think that would look nice as a, a shinier pot. So that's that. And then I'm going to have a go at this candlestick. And like I said, there's, there is actually paint on here. So it might be that I would have to either sand or grind some of that off to start. But I just really want to see what would happen with that. So let's have another go. So that is starting to take the paint off, but I think I would probably need to take that paint off first. I think I used a metal paint on there and then a black over the top to try and get a sort of um, effect on there. But I do want to use these in my doll's house, so I do want to clean these up. And I think that will look quite nice and that's coming out a really nice copper colour under there. So that's the metal polishing part. So now let's have a go at something else. So next I want to have a go at actually cutting a piece of wood. And for that I'm using an emery cut-off disc. And there are quite a few of these in the box. And I'm not sure if they're different grades or whether they're all the same. Just having a quick feel, it feels as though they are all the same. And these will cut through wood and plastic and fiberglass and metal and anything really I suppose and this attaches on with one of these little fittings and you've got a little screw in the end there so fit it in as we did before just put that in the top there and then tighten that off and then use your little spanner And then you need to undo this little screw. And do that when it's in the tool, because then it's actually sort of holding on to it for you nice and tightly. Actually put the screw through the disc first. And then put that other one on the other side, rather like a, a nut, I suppose. that back in there. I'll just twist it around again as much as I can in my fingers. And bring in the little screwdriver part and tighten that up. Okay so that's on there nice and tightly now. I'll just put my gloves back on. Okay, so I've turned the speed of the machine down to number one. And I've got here a piece of basswood. And I'm using that just because it's a, a marked piece that I probably won't be able to use for anything else. So I'm using it as a piece of scrap wood. Now, this the tool is going to be spinning quite quickly. So I may just go off like that. I haven't tried it yet. So you'll see me try it for the first time here. But the thing is just to go slowly and to be really gentle. So get yourself in the right position. And then I'll put the machine on. And just to say as well, I have actually also got my safety glasses on for this. Okay, let's go.
Okay, so that has cut through, but it's not at all a tidy cut. So I think I would need a lot more practice at that before I would actually be able to use this to cut wood for furniture making. And I don't think I was um, putting the right amount of pressure on it either. So that will take some practice in. So it does obviously cut through wood. You can use it for cutting, but it will take some practice to get a nice even straight line across there. Okay, so I fitted into the tool a diamond cutting wheel. And there were two of these in my kit and I've actually just had a practice and I wanted to have a go at shaping mouldings which as you know I do quite often and that's my first sort of rough attempt. I'm going to have another go and obviously I do a more intricate design than this normally but just for practicing purposes I'm just doing a really simple sort of curved design and again I've got the tool on the number one setting and it's just a question of sort of going slowly and really taking your time. So let's have another go. So as you could see there, I did actually come off the pattern once or twice, but that's all down to practice. And that's certainly a lot quicker than doing it with the knife. And then what you could do was, would be um, fit on one of the little sanding wheels, and then you could sand over the top of that, or you could just go back to using your sandpaper and tidying that up by hand. But that's certainly something that the tool can be used for. So I've now fitted into the tool one of the diamond point drill bits and these can be used for etching, embossing, marking and detailing and things like that. Now you may have seen my vlog Learn with Julie about carving and I actually carved by hand using chisels and it was quite difficult and I didn't really get the result I wanted. So I want to have a go with one of these. Now there are various attachments of these diamond point drill bits, all different sizes. You've got lots of different tips there. So I'm just starting off with this pointed pen-like tip and I've drawn a really simple pattern onto my piece of wood. And again, this is the first time I'm trying this. So I'm gonna have a little go at this simple square just to see if these are better than actually using traditional carving tools. So again, I've got the machine on the number one setting. So let's have a go. So again, that was just a first attempt at that, but that was so much easier and quicker than when I used the actual carving tools. And that's very, very rough. But as you can see, with a little bit of practice, I think this would be really good for carving and getting some really sort of small, intricate details. 
and you've got lots of different heads in there. Let's just have a look at some of those. So this was the one I just used, the little sort of pointed pen-like head. But look at all these different shapes that you've got in there. Got like this sort of teardrop shaped one, a small round. These are like the embossing tools that I was using to create those sort of indentations in the wood. So that will do all of that. And you've got this really pointy one here, which would be for even finer detailing. And I'm actually looking forward to having another go with those and seeing what I can actually do and if I can get better results than I got before. But again, it's all, all practice, all down to practice, getting used to holding the tool and the amount of pressure that you need to put on. And as you probably saw there in that little example, when I was going against the grain of the wood, it was a little bit more difficult and I had to adjust the pressure and that made my line a little bit wiggly. Again, I think if you were even maybe to change the head and use a different tool for going different directions along the grain, that would help. But that's certainly something I'm going to have another go at. I really like the look of all these different shapes. I think we could create some really nice designs with those. So what I want to have a go at now is actually sanding a finished piece. Now these are just some crates that I've made for another project, but I think this would come in handy for finished pieces of furniture and also for sanding before painting or adding your stain or varnish. So I've got in here the little flat rubber wheel and then these are little self-adhesive sanding discs and just by feeling that, I think that's probably a, a 240 grit or something like that. So let's stick that on there. And again, I've left the machine on the number one setting. Let's put my um, safety glasses on. Okay, and let's have a go. So I was hardly touching that then against the box and as you can see it's almost sanded it right back. So I think this would probably be too harsh for sanding after you've applied your paint or varnish or stain. But I think as sort of preparing the piece before you apply your finish that that would actually work. And you just need to be really gentle with it so that you're not changing the shape of your piece. But again, that was certainly a lot easier and quicker than sanding by hand. So when I apply wood dye to a piece, because the wood dye is quite matte, I like to finish off with a coat of clear wax. And I always use shoe polish for that. So what I want to do now is actually have a go at buffing up the shoe polish with the machine and see if I can get a better finish that way. So I'm going to apply it as I normally would with a piece of kitchen towel. sort of work that in there and then I fitted another one of those little sort of um, polishing wheels on there. Again I'm on the number one setting. Let me just get my gloves back on and again with this you just need to be really light so hardly touching the little um, polishing wheel against the piece. So let's turn her on. And that did actually work really well. So in just a few sort of sweeps of this, that gave it that lovely sort of shine. And I suppose it's not much easier than doing it with the um, kitchen towel, but you just get a, a better result and a little bit quicker as well. But I really like that. That looks really nice. So that's definitely something I'll be using it for.
So those few demonstrations that I showed you there really do only scratch the surface of what this tool is capable of doing. But it's quite hard to demonstrate some of what it can do without actually having a job in hand. But as I work through other projects, if I ever find the need for the rotary tool, I will share that with you. And perhaps I'll do an update vlog as well when I become more skilled at using it. And I do think that a rotary tool is a really great piece of equipment for a miniaturist to have. I still think there are some jobs that I would prefer to do by hand, especially cutting wood. I certainly feel more control um, with the craft knife and rule when I'm cutting wood and I think it gives a more precise result as well. But for things like um, etching or carving and heavy sanding jobs this tool will prove invaluable. So I hope that if you have a rotary tool, perhaps one that you haven't got around to using yet or if you're considering buying one, I hope that this episode has been of some help to you. So that's it for today. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye! Bye.